I would like to welcome you all to the second Merck Africa Luminary. The first luminary actually was held at Merck's headquarters in Germany last year. It is my great pleasure to open this event for the first time in Africa here in Kenya. And I am particularly pleased to welcome Kenya's Cabinet Secretary for Health, Dr. James Mataria, who has been instrumental in making this cooperation happen, and the Governor of Nairobi County, Dr. Evans Kidero, who has been a great supporter of this cooperation throughout the time when we started. I would like really, on behalf of Merck, to thank you for your ongoing support for our presence here in Kenya and of all our initiatives here. Thank you very much. The most recent example of a great support is right behind me. The backdrop was printed last minute yesterday on a Sunday. All print shops were closed and the original version was in the wrong format so we couldn't hang it. And what we required was a landscape. So the governor's office made it possible to open a print shop and get this wonderful new backdrop produced in no time. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Merck opened its representative office in Kenya in 2013. It is our hub in East Africa. And since then, we have experienced Kenya as a leading economy whose health infrastructure has enabled us to go far along the road to universal health coverage and to access to medicine. But interestingly enough, Kenya and Germany share a longer history. In 1966, Germany was the first country to recognize Kenya on independence. And all of these are reasons why we choose Kenya as the first African host country for the Africa luminary. However, we recognize the importance of all the other sub-Saharan African countries and we will work closely with you and your governments and the relevant local stakeholders to contribute towards this fascinating growth and future development. We want to play a significant role in building healthcare capacity and improving access to sustainable and innovative healthcare solutions across the continent. And I believe that we are doing a good job, as you will hopefully see during this morning session and the rest of the two days. The Merck Africa Luminary brings together healthcare leaders from across the continent and beyond to discuss and share, share ideas around seven areas. Diabetes, fertility, oncology, cardiology, family medicine, nutrition, and life science research. Why these topics? On one hand, we have found that there's tremendous interest in best practice sharing and discussion in these areas. And secondly, because these are the fields that are the heart of Merck's expertise. So allow me a mo to take a moment for a short introduction of Merck. What do we do? We are a science and technology company that focuses on three businesses, healthcare, life science, and performance materials. For example, we are the global leader in fertility medicine. More than two million babies have already been born thanks to our products. We call them Merck babies. <laughs> we are one of the leaders in the new field of immuno-oncology. So we are developing ways to use the human immune system to fight tumors. And we produce drugs that are globally recognized as the gold standard therapy for diabetes or cardiovascular disease. In the field of over-the-counter medication, we have been using our expertise to provide, provide healthier lives for generations. Seven Cs, for example, well known in Kenya, is one of our brands for the whole family. But we are much more than a pharma company. Our life science business focuses on enabling research or biopharmaceutical manufacturing. 
together with the recent acquisition of Sigma Aldrich. And by the way, when I came yesterday evening from the airport, I passed the office of Sigma Aldrich, so present in Kenya. We have a portfolio today now of over 300,000 products. The commonality, they make research or production smarter, faster, and more cost effective. And then we have one more business, which we call performance materials. This focuses on high-tech chemicals, such as liquid crystals. We are the global market leader in liquid crystal technology, so the chances are extremely high that the smartphones you're having with you today contain Merck products. So it's Merck Insight. We are not allowed to claim that officially. <laughs> so I do it unofficially. It's an ino that was the unofficial part of my speech. Our products are part of your lives in more ways that you might realize. And our aim is to develop products that enhance life, making it healthier, easier, or more colorful, as our logo, which you have seen in front of the hotel. And you see a color variation here on my jacket as well. Merck has been active in Af Africa since at least 1897. At least, I say, because that's the earliest mention we could find in our archives. We now have 400 staff at 10 locations across Africa. Since 2013 alone, we have opened six new offices in Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, Ethiopia, Angola, and Mozambique. Merck believes and I personally believe in the enormous potential of this continent. We have high hopes and confidence for Africa's growth and development. And we believe that Merck has much to offer its African partners on this journey. We are not like other companies in a number of important ways. For example, we are the oldest chemical and pharmaceutical company in the world. We will be celebrating our 305th anniversary in 2018. You must be doing something right if you survive 350 years and 13 generations in this world. <laughs> Secondly, we are a largely, still a largely family-owned business. The Merck family, the same family which has founded our company, still owns 70% of the total capital of the company. 30% are publicly traded. And family ownership gives you a special outlook on business because the family is interested in passing on the company to the next generation in the best condition possible. And therefore, we focus very, very much on the long term. Quarterly results are okay and we deliver them but we think of our work in generations. And we don't sacrifice the future for short-term gains. And this is why we believe we fit very well into Africa. Also, we know only responsible business will be successful in the long term. So responsible behavior is at the heart of everything we do. Responsibility starts at home, having taken responsibility for the quality of our products, taking responsibility for the environmental impact of our projects, taking responsibility for the compliant conduct of our stuff, but also taking the responsibility in designing the Biddle's business model, in helping people, in improving lives in societies all around the world. In addition, we do other projects to support, which are also if you would like to say a kind of investment in society. In Africa, we have committed ourselves to fight against schistosomiasis. At the moment, about 200 million people across the continent suffer from this tropical warm disease. And in children, as you know, an infection is particularly devastating. Schistosomiasis stunts growth, causes learning disabilities, and leads to anemia. So if not only affects the current health of the society, but also weakens the next generation. Since 2007, we have worked with the World Health Organization to donate large numbers of our Prasiquantel tablets 
to the health authorities in affected countries. So far, we have donated over 290 million tablets. About 64 million patients have been treated, and most of them school children. And because once we start things, we don't, are not used to doing half measure, we have made a commitment. We will continue to donate tablets until schistosomiasis is, is eliminated in Africa. Of course, we are also aware of problems which exist. For example, that of counterfeit medicines in Kenya and in the entire continent of Africa. We are committed to fight this element of organized crime, for example, with mini labs that are able to identify counterfeit medicines with easy to apply chemical analysis. So these mini labs have the size of one suitcase. They can be carried around in the country and can be used very easily in most rural areas to detect counterfeit medicines. We also protect our products increasingly with security features to distinguish genuine from fake medicines. We need to continue this fight in public-private partnerships as well as the bilateral initiatives. Of course, Tropical diseases are only one of the health challenges facing African countries today. And in fact, most countries across Africa have made remarkable strides in reducing infectious diseases. But now, just like in other parts of the world, non-communicable diseases are on the rise. Diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, stroke, all of that used to be considered Western diseases. That time has passed. But with the gaps in education and overstretched healthcare systems, too many people are being left without diagnosis or treatment. In Kenya, non communicable and chronic diseases already account for over a quarter of all premature deaths. Diabetes is a good case in point. It's one of the most common NCDs. And according to some estimates, there are 400 million people with diabetes around the world. 77 of them live in low and middle income countries. And the rates are growing. In fact, it looks like diabetes will become the seventh most common cause of death worldwide by 2030. Here in Kenya, according to the numbers from the International Diabetes Federation, almost 800,000 people have diabetes but only one quarter of them know about it. And as you know, untreated diabetes causes a lot of suffering and sometimes also premature death. The situation is similar or worse in other African countries, and that is why Merck has started its capacity advancement program. It's a five-year program that focuses on non-communicable diseases and builds on collaboration with ministries of health, universities, and local patient organizations across sub-Saharan Africa. Its goal is to expand professional capacity in the areas of medical education, community awareness, and advocacy. So what does it mean in practice? During our large-scale diabetes days, communities are educated about diabetes and have access to free screenings. Over the last years, these community awareness efforts have reached more than 60,000 people, including here in Kenya. And now we are also raising awareness about cancer prevention and detection. At the same time, we want to ensure that doctors and medical professionals have expert knowledge to diagnose and treat conditions like diabetes and cancer. We provide training with experts to share current best practice. This also enables medical students to act as ambassadors for diabetes, cancer, and other NCDs across Africa's rural areas. So far, we have trained more than 7,000 medical students and aim to expand this to 25,000 students by the end of 2018. Lastly, we are working to tackle the stigma of infertility. 
Our new More Than a Mother campaign will provide medical education and awareness and will focus on both male and female infertility issues. You will hear more about some of these efforts later on today and will also hear how we are using e-health options to spread both medical knowledge and awareness beyond urban areas. And in all of that, our goal is to build professional healthcare capacity and ultimately to improve access to innovative and equitable healthcare in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, over the coming two days, you will have access to seven parallel sessions on issues surrounding non-communicable diseases. And I'm pleased to see that we have healthcare providers and policymakers from more than 20 countries gathered here today. You've come across from across Africa, as well as from Asia, Europe, and North America. Many of you are the kinds of doctors that Thomas Edison was hoping for in the 19th century. He wrote, the doctor of the future will interest his patients in the care of human frame, diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. You are these doctors of the future. I wish you fruitful discussions over the coming two days, and I look forward to listen to your ideas and suggestions how to improve healthcare across Africa and how we can contribute it. to it. Asante sana. Navatakia Majadiliano Mema Yenye Mato Teo Mazuri. Kenya Ya Kujenga Bara La Africa. Caribou Luminary.